Thanks for taking the time to sit down. I think the last time we spoke was the board game stream. I yeah, think, right? I think. Yeah, I think so. Was, uh, when, when Deception. You it, yeah, when you guessed it on our on our tabletop show. Uh, and that was a lot of fun. That was the first time you'd played Deception, right? It was, and I loved it so much. I bought a copy. It is an extremely good party game, so it will be worth your while. I have yet to work it into like uh, there's there's a group that uh, we're all fully vaccinated. We hang out and stuff, and mm. and there's a group yeah. of people that uh, they love to play. You've pro you, you're a board game aficionado. You've probably heard of it, Bonanza. The uh, sure yes yeah, yeah they love that game so much, and I'm like I I like it, but I'm like guys, <laughs> can we get a little variety? Can we play? something else it's like it's bonanza or it's code names and it's nothing else and i'm like i like them i see i want to play other games sometimes <laughs> so like so like how some people have like Catan night they're like mm. this is bonanza night they're just yeah bonan they're bananas yeah. for bonanza yeah I which see. better than Catan night but uh you know yeah, I uh, agreed. Yeah, that would be more fun. Uh, is it is it that they just aren't exposed to other board games, or it's, are, are they all pretty like casual in terms of their their uh, exposure yes. to the hobby? Very, yeah, very mm. casual, and and it's oftentimes it's uh, like a lot of times I'll be like, all right, well, we can start the evening with Bonanza, whatever, and maybe we'll maybe we'll work in something else later on, and then they start drinking, and then it's like this is a bad idea to try and teach you guys <laughs> new games right now. <laughs> yeah, gotcha. I'm sure you'll eventually get it to the table, and it is mm -hmm. fantastic. It's it's definitely a mainstay whenever I have a, a group. And yeah, I guess for I guess now that we're on the topic, uh, I know that you are also uh, a board game uh, fan yourself. Uh, Absolutely. I think that's like how I was first. I think it might have been Lucian who was just like, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, like Kyle. Kyle loves games too. Like I was like, okay, yeah, right, good to yeah. know. Yeah, same, same. The he because he would come over for the the game nights that I used to host here, and he would be like, "Oh, I gotta introduce you to Sung Won." <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'm looking for. Oh, well, I mean, hey, you you're fully vaccinated. Maybe we sure. can uh, talk a little bit after yeah, this. Uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, no, always looking for more people to play with, and uh, I'm just curious, what are your what what are your some of your favorites, just of all time, all time favorites. I always, I, 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 cause I used to host the, the type of board game nights where people could kind of come and go whenever and they could, and, and we would get a, a fairly sizable group of people. So I would gravitate towards mm. those, those party games that are kind of shorter run things like one night werewolf was a mainstay for a long yep. time. And, uh, and I've, it's because of, uh, because of board and barrel, the, the, the board game show that you, that you so generously appeared on. That I've started to delve mm -hmm. into the 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 crunchier, meatier board games that are designed sure. for you to sit with for a while, and I've really yeah. started to appreciate those now. Like Nemesis is a blast. That's a great game. And I yeah. never would have played that like three years ago because it, I would have been like, "Oh, it's only five players, and it takes like three hours to fit." No way. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Are you are you you're also playing um, the online version, right? Like tabletop simulator. Yeah, I haven't played that one uh, tangibly mm. yet, but yeah, yeah, I've played it. That played also it helps because <laughs> setting up those games can be oh, a yeah. beast. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, for me, for me, it's like uh, I'll, I'll arrange the the sort of guest lineup depending on what games I want to bring. So it's like okay, That's really I want to bring out. Uh, dominant species. I don't know if you ever heard of dominant species. It's one I, I recently that played. One. That's very heavy. Basically, it's um, you're all different uh animal types. So I, I like you know amphibians, uh, mammals, reptiles, and you and what you're doing is you're sort of spreading your species on these tiles that expand across the map, and then you can like eliminate each other. You can adapt your or like grow enhance your species so they can go into different types of areas. Uh, all sorts of, it, it's basically just about expanding your species, and it's very, very dense. Uh, so that cool. game took, I think we played about four-player game, and that took about five to six hours, <laughs> maybe Ooh. like five hours. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's, it is not a short one. And, yeah. Uh, but it's, <laughs> it's, it's actually one of those games where you have to decide who the right crowd is, right? Like. Oh, absolutely. For something that long, yeah. 
Exactly. There are only certain types of players I can invite to that. Yeah. Where it's like, okay, are you going to have the patience to first off learn all the rules and then play it for this long? Because with right. the group I played with, uh, we were like, it, it was. It didn't feel like five hours. We kind of looked and we're like, oh shit, it's it's already like. Oh, that's this great. Time. Like we. Yeah, it was it was actually pretty pretty fully engaging throughout. That's perfect for one of those long form games. Mm, mm, yeah, and I love, but I love all sorts of games. I love light games. I love heavy games. I, yeah, you know, for I've, me, it's I've, just I've, I love all games. I've definitely become much more well versed uh, thanks to the show. Uh, cause mm. when we started that, I was like, I don't want to sit with a game for longer, than, like an hour tops. That's it. And now I'm like, oh, no, I can handle a three-, four-hour game, no problem. Yeah, I think it totally depends on the game, obviously, you know, if it's engaging enough. And who but you're also, playing with, also, like, the people sure. you're playing with. Yes, yeah, yeah. definitely. That's a big factor. Are there any games, just, it doesn't have to be heavy games, but any games you've been wanting to try? You're like, ooh, I hear this is good, or this oh. has been on my to playlist. Probably, yes. Uh, nothing that's coming to the top <laughs> of my mind. There are a bunch that I've, gotcha. uh, that I've, uh, I've got. Actually, yeah, I've got I got a couple from uh, you know I I I back Kickstarter campaigns all the time and and get yeah. get get games delivered and there are a couple that that came in over the the course of the pandemic that I've had no chance to play because nobody's around. I got the Scooby Doo mm. Betrayal at House on the Hill, oh, okay. which I'm yeah, curious yeah. about because it looks like it's a very watered down version of the game to make it more kid friendly which i'm not sure yeah. how much i'm gonna like that but i i've always been a big fan of scooby-doo so i wanted to get it uh I yeah got... i hear it's pretty good for uh like a kid's version that's cool we played uh yeah. we played the one um the Baldur's gate uh reskin of mm. it and that yeah. that really impressed me because i i liked the original betrayal quite a bit mm -hmm. And then uh, when we played the Baldur's Gate one on on the show, at one point I was like, "Oh wow, they took all the things that were kind of issues with the original and made them better. This isn't just a reskin. Mm. They like they improved the game. So that's cool. It's yeah, I highly recommend that one for sure. Uh, mm. I, I also picked up uh, a five minute dungeon and five minute." mystery five minute dungeon i think i know this one and uh, five minute mysteries kind of like that one's playable solo so i tried that one out a little bit i have yet to try five minute dungeon it's like a car a very fast-paced card game you mm. give you get you get a little five minute timer and it's two to four players maybe two to five i can't remember and it's just okay. rapid fire trying to pull your cards with the other people at the table to try and beat one dungeon boss after another within the the five minute window that you get. Mm, okay, yeah, I've heard of this, and they did like five minute Marvel too, right? I think they did, yeah. And a bunch, bunch of other stuff. Okay, uh, you want a recommendation uh, sure, for a absolutely. real time game? Yeah. So if you like that sort of frantic, like we have a time limit, we got to do shit uh, together. Uh, a couple options. Um, one I recently played uh, is called Project Elite. Have you heard of this? I haven't. Uh, it's very fun. Basically, you are a bunch of, like, space marines, and uh, these aliens are on the board. They're all running at you, and they all have set paths. So it's a tile-based board, and these okay. aliens are all, uh, they just run uh, on their turns. And you have, like, two minutes each round to just roll dice and match them to, like, effects. So it's like, if you match, put these dice on this card, you can shoot a gun and shoot those okay, aliens. Okay, yeah. Or you can try to, like, fulfill objectives. And it's just frantic, blasting aliens as fast as you can in two minutes with and, and or trying to do objectives. That uh, sounds fantastic. Really, really fun. It's not hard to learn. Uh, like, once you understand the flow of it, it's pretty smooth. It's like, you know, aliens do this, and then if they're if you're next to them, they attack you. Uh, and there's all sorts of aliens. Uh, that was really, really fun. I would recommend Pro that. Project, also, uh, what was it called? Project uh, El Elite. 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 And it's got great minis, too. Really great minis. Um, Adding that to the another list. Another good one is, have you ever played um, Magic Maze? Magic Maze. That one rings a bell, but no, I don't think I've played it before. Magic Maze is one where basically uh, the theme is a little wonky, but you're in a, you're, you're like fantasy characters in a mall you're trying to rob the mall it's it's interesting but okay. basically it's real time uh you are how it works is to move the characters 
uh, only, like for example, let's see, for me, I can only move characters left and up, while you can only move characters right, and you can only use the escalators and go down. Uh, okay. And you're trying to move these pieces around this grid-based mall, but the thing is, you can't talk. <laughs> oh, so you can't, you ha- yeah. okay. So it's, all, it's a lot of like, okay, uh, you have to really like work together, and there's a thing, like there are certain spaces because there's a timer the whole time, where if you go on a timer space, you flip the timer, and you have, like, you can talk until you go back to the game. So you're like, okay, if you go here, I'll go, I'll, I'll move from here, okay, let's move yeah. here. So you get we'll little timeouts to try and come up with a plan. Nice. Right, but once you pick up the pieces again, back to no talking. Mm-hmm. And then one of one of the funniest things is, is has there's a big red piece, and it's just the do something piece where it's like if you just slam it in front of somebody it's just you're silently going do something like they're trying to get them to do something <laughs> they can't if they're like if they don't know what they're trying if you're if they, you can't communicate yeah. it very very <laughs> frantic very fun uh yeah you've done kind of like a fun little uh, sci- uh real time game as well that's um, cool there the the no talking thing um there are a couple there are a couple uh uh mystery games that uh, that use that mechanic that I really really like. I mean, it, Deception obviously kind of kind of mm-hmm. takes that a little bit, but uh, Mysterium is one of my all time favorites. Um, mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where where the ghost is trying to steer everybody to solve the mur- the the murder with just weird, obscure like Dixit style cards. Right, right. And uh, and another one that I really I, I found this one not long before the pandemic hit, so I didn't get to play it too many times. But uh, Paranormal Detectives. Ooh, I've heard. Is this a newer game? It's new-ish. Yeah, I think it. I think it okay. had. I think it was pretty new when I picked it up. Um, oh but, yes, uh, I did hear about this. Yeah, okay. it's yeah, yeah, really yeah. cool. So it's a competitive, like semi-cooperative type thing where uh, the. The detectives at the table are all competing to try and solve the mystery first, uh, mm. while the the ghost is trying to steer that them all individually toward the solution. Because the ghost wins if anybody wins. Uh, I see. Okay. And and uh, and there's various different cards that each detective can play to ask an ambiguous, open-ended question of the ghost mm. to try and answer with various means. Like there's a Ouija board where they can try and spell out like five letters of something, or there's a, there's, there's one with like coat hanger style wire ropes that they can try and form sculpt into a shape. Um, That's right. This one had like really silly stuff, right? Like you can hold their hand to draw or whatever. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. The, like the whiteboard yeah. where, where the detective holds the, the, the dry erase pen and then the ghost puts their hand over their hand and tries to draw without and as soon as as soon as the pen comes up that's it so it has to stay on the the whiteboard oh that's funny while it's drawing okay. yeah it's it's a lot of fun that sounds great yeah i, I that whole mechanic of just not being able to talk uh and like silently helping is always really fun it's um yeah. another game that not exactly the same thing but um you ever play uh, either The Crew or The Mind? No. Ooh, okay. Uh, so the I'll go into The Mind. This is going to be me me and you just going, you ever played this? Yeah, this, yeah, this whole this? hour is just going to be, yeah. You know, I honestly could do the I don't care. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Uh, so The Mind is really, really fun. Basically, it's, uh, you, get, you, get, you have cards numbered 1 through 100. Okay. And you all get randomly dealt, like, numbered cards. And all you do is you have to play them. From smallest to largest, but just without oh, talking. Oh, I've heard of that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah where it's just trying it's, to mind meld with everybody else at the table. Yeah, yeah, it's very fun, and it it sounds you know at at its core it sounds like what that's stupid. Like, what do you mean? But no, there really is like once you play it like a game or two, and depending on the people you're playing with, you can really kind of sense of like. Are they are they not going because they know that I know that they know that <laughs> <laughs> that I have the lower card right, yeah. that they they know that I should play it is this right you know there's <laughs> there's all all these moments like that uh, that's great. and then what's funny is I uh, I've played I've beaten it once with friends but it, the funny thing is it took like ten tries or whatever oh yeah but I, I brought it home I brought it home to my family and I played with my mom my dad and my brother 
and we beat it the first time. And they were like, <laughs> oh, they were like, cute game. I was like, no, this is really supposed to be really hard. Yeah. Like, I don't, they're like, wow, that's fun. That's very cute. I was like, I was like, holy shit. Yeah. I guess our family is like really tight knit. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so the mind is uh, one really great one. And then another one that has a very similar feel, uh, a little more gamey, is uh, The Crew, which um, uh, it's a mission-based trick-taking game. Are you familiar with trick-taking? Like yeah, parts? Ab- yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. So basically it's cooperative trick-taking where, uh, depending on the mission, you like have to take certain tricks. So it might be like, this player needs to take this card, and this player needs to take this card. Okay. Uh but you can't talk. But it, right, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it's all—it's this thing of like, okay, well, no, there's limited communication because there, there's this kind of clever thing where it's like you can put down a card, and then you can be like, you can move this little token that's like, currently this card is the highest of this card in my hand or the lowest in my hand. There's a mm. slight communication which okay. makes it okay, okay, interesting. But yeah, it's this great sort of like. And then there's, you know, every mission is different. Uh, I I mean, I've barely even broken the surface of it. I've played, like, maybe, like, five or sure. so missions. But um, it's really, really fun. Each one plays different, and it keeps adding, like, twists. Like, uh-oh, like, there's uh, radio uh, static in this mission, and I won't say what the twist is, but there's fun, like, a lot sure. of fun, different variations. So if you like the trick-taking games yeah. and, like, that sort of cooperative that sounds like fun play uh that one's also really good so the 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 limited communication thing reminds me of one of my favorite party games that you may or may not have heard of uh ladies and gentlemen Ooh, you know i've heard one? of it but give me oh, give me the give oh me my the, god the, the, so uh, it's it's yeah. a it's a party game for i think i think the minimum is yeah the minimum is four players and the max is 10 uh okay and it's it's a little bit of a complicated setup so it's it's kind of hard to get a big group to sit down and play it because and because there's so many rules to explain because there's so much different stuff happening it's a lot of chaos but uh mm. basically you play in in teams of 2 and it's set in Victorian England and you're supposed to kind of sort of role play a little bit so oh I have heard of this one yes, person yes. in the couple is the lady and one person in the couple is the gentleman uh, and sometimes it's more fun to to play gender bend and and you know swap sure. it or whatever it doesn't matter. Uh, but the gentlemen at the table go to the stock market during the day and play this weird. It's kind of like a, a greedy greedy goblins type of mini game where you're just trying mm. to quickly grab tokens and try and score points that way or earn money that okay. way basically. Uh, while the ladies spend their day shopping for the most elegant gown and accessories to go to the ball at the end of the week. Because uh, the, the winner is the, is the couple that has the, the lady that turns the most heads or whatever. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, uh, so at the end, so that's what's going on during the day phase of the game. And then during the night phase, you communicate with your partner uh, about how your day went and about what you're trying to do, but you cannot use any specifics. You have to talk mm. around like you can never say, well, this is how much money we have to go. Yeah. You have to be like, well, I, I had a, I had an interesting day at the market. It wasn't <laughs> it wasn't the best, but it was all right. right. Yeah, so uh, it's it's a lot of fun and it's a lot of a lot of chaos. And then there's a mechanic when you have an odd number of players where the the odd man out plays as the uh, the the concubine or the, the the mistress or something who can kind of hop around between different couples and try and get the gentleman to to woo her as well. Yeah, yeah, it's fun. That sounds great. The the team based thing that that's really fun. Sounds yeah, really fun. Like, kind of reminds me of um not not the theme, but like you ever play like a, a times up like oh yeah recall or time. Yeah. yeah, yeah, just where you can do teams of pairs or yeah, um, like yeah, the, the whole team team base like Captain Sonar. You ever play that or uh, no? I don't know that uh, one. Captain Sonar is uh, just uh, is a four on four real time submarine battle game. It's fucking great. <laughs> okay, basically, basically imagine like you're you're both playing like a real time battleship uh-huh. of like. The captain is shouting out orders, like, all right, turn right, turn left on this grid. Uh, 
each side has a captain. Each side has a person who is a navigator who is listening to the other team's captain and recording what they're saying oh, wow. and trying to figure out on this map where they are. And then one person <laughs> is like the engines guy who has to set up the weapons. One person, yeah. And so it's this great thing of like you're all your ships are all moving in real time on this grid, and they can't like double back. And there's this there's great dramatic moments of like Captain will be like, "I'm firing." <laughs> D9. And then you just wait. And then you wait for the team and they go, hit. And it's like (laughs) just pure like adrenaline. Yeah. Yes. Like we got him. Um, What's it called? Captain Sonar. Captain Uh, Sonar. God, you're giving me so many games to look into. Oh, listen. Yeah. (laughs) It's it's a fantastic party game. Um, That is one that is just... If you get eight people who are... Into the idea, yeah. Uh, it's 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 a absolute. Some people for it might be too stressful for some people, but if you can get eight people excited about it, they'll have a yeah. good time. Yeah, um, yeah. It's very very fun. Cool. Um, <laughs> now, I mean, while I could just talk about board games the entire time, Likewise. I'm not necessarily opposed yeah. to it. Uh, <laughs> I would, uh, I guess, just in general, uh, besides board games, uh, what are I guess some of your you know, any any other hobbies or interests you're passionate about uh, that people might not know about, or uh, what do you what do you do to spend your time? You know, if when you have free time. Yeah, uh, well, I I uh, people probably or might know anyway that I I I am a Twitch streamer as well mm. as a voice actor. Uh, that's that is definitely a hobby, not a <laughs> not a career, but uh, sure. Uh, but it's it's fun. I, I I do a little. It's it's a little gimmicky, but I I think it's cool to be able to stream games that I'm in and and let viewers, you know, talk to me while I do it. It it makes it mm-hmm. enjoyable for me. And it, I I I don't know. I think kind of a little peek behind the curtain for for some folks to to watch. Sure, sure. So it's fun. Uh, has there been like a a favorite game you've like in, of that in that vein? Oh, of like the, the best experience on Twitch. The entire Near franchise. Uh, mm, I okay. I started gotcha. with I start. That's what started me in Twitch streaming was was playing Near Automata, and uh, mm. and I have since gone back and I played the the original Near. I played Drakengard three. I'm now playing the Near Replicant like remaster remake ish version of of the game i i just mm-hmm. I, i've become such a yoko taro nerd because those mm. games are the story's so good yeah that's a series i do need to get into i've heard amazing things about it, especially about automata but um i uh so it sounds like you were uh playing games even you know even before the like i is that safe to assume you were, I, yeah uh, i th- uh, i mean when i, I was when I was younger, I was I was a pretty a fairly hardcore gamer. Like I would I would tr- pick up games. I I think I had uh, I had a GameFly subscription back when it was super expensive and not worth it. Mm. Uh, and <laughs> and I would uh, and I would get what whatever new game came out, I would get it and I would try to get a hundred percent completion before I sent it back and got something different. And then you know as I as I started to get older, I had less time for it. I became much more casual. And I kind of started to sure. gravitate towards uh, towards like Overwatch or uh, or Rocket League style games that mm. are like the very quick in and out, jump in for twenty minutes and then jump back out again, and and that has yeah. been my my go to. And being able to jump on Twitch like that gives me an excuse to dive into these more story rich games that are that are part of you know what I strive to do with my career. So it's it's fun. Sure, sure. Um, what is one of, like your favorite game, video game? Uh, gosh, you know that that changes so often. Um, you can get, you can name a couple. I think uh, I I I have to put I think Sea of Thieves has to be on my list mm, for sure. Okay. Uh, because I got really into that one for a while, and and it's one that I will still go back to every now and then. Uh, just to see what they've added to it. Um, 
And that's the multiplayer pirate one, right? It is, and it's very goofy. It. And and it's when it first came out, there was not much to it, but they have really they've they've made good on the promise of continued development, and it's it's really come along. It's a lot of fun. Mm, okay. Uh, cool. uh, I really like specifically the Ewok hunt mode of Star Wars Battlefront Two. Okay. It's, it is. And what does that entail? It is delightful. It's a uh, so Battlefront. It like is it's the the main game mechanic in the Star Wars Battlefront series is like giant army on one side, giant army on the other side. I think it's supposed to be twenty versus twenty or something like that, uh, mm-hmm. where you're reenacting famous battles from the Star Wars franchise. But Ewok Hunt was a gimmicky like I think they they added it at Halloween one year, uh, just as a joke. And it caught on so so much that they they added it as a permanent game mode because it's on the forest moon of Endor right sure. after the Death Star has has been destroyed. Mm. Uh, and most of the players, I think it's I think it's up to sixteen players can play in that mode, and okay. all but two of them will spawn in as stormtroopers who <laughs> have. A flashlight that's got a limited battery and just one blaster and it's pitch black and they're just waiting Mm. for a rescue shuttle and the other two players start as Ewoks who are hunting the stormtroopers and if the Ewoks die they just they respawn as Ewoks if the stormtroopers die they respawn as Ewoks that's so great. it's like a zombie type of like, like mechanic where the the more people die the harder it gets and it's so much fun <laughs> that does sound great uh and so like are the, are the ewoks also like i assume to scale like they're they're do they are yeah. they like super short yeah they're like oh, half man. the size of a stormtrooper or maybe a little shorter uh and they can they can see really well in the dark. Like the the lighting is different when you're playing as an Ewok, so it's much easier to see. You've got like the the sense thing where you can just it it plays a little <laughs> sniff sound effect, and then you kind of go into focus mode, and you can see the outlines of all the stormtroopers as you're running gotcha. around trying to sneak up on them, and and uh, you just kind of sneak up and poke them with your stick a couple times. It's it's so much fun. I love it. <laughs> that does sound really fun. Yeah, I love silly little modes like that. Like whether they're official ones or ones that people come up with. Yeah. Uh, those were really fun. Like, um, just like one really like just it brought brought to mind. Like, uh, I was playing uh, the original Smash Bros with a friend. Yeah. Uh, and we and we uh, we had this idea where basically, uh, you uh, you you play Smash? Are you familiar with? Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, the 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 mines the mines that go on the ground yeah and it just became this game where we played on sector Z and uh, we would take turns like we we turned the mines on mines on very high and each person had to throw down a mine that was it but as mines kept getting more and more plentiful on the board it was harder <laughs> and harder to keep throwing down the mines and it would inevitably end in one person triggering a mine landing into another mine just five yeah. different mines getting blown <laughs> off the stage it was. It's way too much, like way more fun than we expected. Yeah. Just, I love just coming up with dumb, like silly <laughs> modes like that. Uh, I don't know if you've ever done anything like that. Uh, like, have you ever I'm, created? Like, oh yeah, I'm control, trying to. Like, I can't. Yeah. I like yeah. That that kind of thing is is more fun than the actual game sometimes. Uh, mm-hmm. And I'm trying to think of. I don't know why I can't think of any examples, but but I know I've done that that kind of stuff before. Um, right. Yeah. I mean, we'll, we'll even, you know, my friends and I will just do like, we'll just turn anything into a fucking game. Like sometimes we'll just be like talking about like, I don't know, sandwiches or something. And it's like, can we guess each other's favorite sandwich? Right. <laughs> just, just, just turn, <laughs> everything turns into a, a stupid, I love it. I love fucking That's like, I remember, it's, I remember, uh, sitting at lunch in the cafeteria back in high school and my the, the one friend that I had the same lunch period as we had a game where we would get towards the end of the lunch period and we would try and track back our conversation that was our game mm. try and figure out how did we get on to this topic and just go back yeah. all the way through everything well then we talked about this and then 
<laughs> I've Stupid absolutely dude. done that too. Because yep. sometimes you're like, wait, why are we talking about yeah. this? Yeah. Right? <laughs> like, like, why are we talking about uh, sandwich toppings? Yeah. Oh, wait. We, when we circle back, back, back. It was because of this stupid thing. Yeah. And that. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. That's a lot of fun too. Um, now, uh, I like to give uh, the guests an opportunity if you'd like. Uh, is there a topic that you would like to bring up or a question for me that you would like to ask? Oh, and if not, don't I'm, worry about it. No, I like we're we're talking about it right now. Like this is this is great. This is just just shooting the shit talking about uh, about about games and stuff is is a blast. <laughs> yeah. So you you nothing nothing specific then? No, I don't think so. Unless you're a hockey fan. Cool. <laughs> I am not, but I would like to. Hear, I'd like to hear about your 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 enthusiasm. Sure. Uh, <laughs> tell, tell us about your your sort of history with hockey. Uh, I got into hockey. I grew up in Kansas, where there is mm. no hockey anywhere to be found. But uh, my my cousin grew up in the the northern Utah region, and uh, and mm. he he was big into hockey when he was a kid, and. He was a year older than me, and like I, I for a long time I was like we're best friends, and then you know, so I like I kind of idolized him, and I was like he's into hockey, sure. I'm gonna get into hockey, uh, and mm. uh, uh, I became a big fan of the Colorado Avalanche partially because they were really really good at the time, and mm -hmm. partially because they were geographically the closest to where I lived. Uh, okay. Okay. And they have been so bad for so long, and this <laughs> year they are they are cup favorites, and they're two and zero in round two against the Vegas Golden Knights, and I'm and they're playing game three tonight. I'm I'm really excited about it. <laughs> so you stuck with them th through and through. through you weren't through. one of those that no, well that they just oh I'll just jump onto another team. So I, well no I didn't jump onto any other teams, but I did stop following the sport after the lockout in. Uh, Oh, was it oh four oh five? I think they they had a lockout shortened season, and I I lost interest for a while because that was also at the point in time where I'm like transitioning from living in Kansas as a high schooler to living in Los Angeles as a college student. Um, mm, okay. So I like just it kind of it kind of fell off the radar for me for for a couple few years, but I got back into it, and now I'm excited because my team's my team is good again because they were really, really I... good. I do like hearing about because I'm not like a super I'm not super like knowledgeable about sports. Sure, but I love hearing about people's like journeys with their teams, right? Like, uh, I mean, I mean, admittedly, even like you know, because my family really loves watching sports, so mm -hmm. even kind of through them, I would like they would always root for uh, like they they're in Michigan, so they they love like the the oh god, I'm gonna embarrass myself. The that, Lions, I think that football, football team. team. Yeah, yeah, I think that's right. The Lions and yeah. It's uh they they love football and they love basketball so like the Pistons and okay. like yeah so, so so anything any I I I would just sort of like experience their excitement and kind right. of get it yeah and and even back when I used, I was I born, I was born in Minnesota so like the Vikings were like a huge thing in my school like, uh -huh. even though I I didn't care that much even I was like kind of swept up in like. Yeah. Oh yeah. But they're kind of cool. It's um, it's hard not to, right? Like I went to I went to school at USC and I've never mm -hmm. been a football fan, but they were so good at football and everybody around me was like, "Hey, we're, let's go to the game. Let's watch, you know?" So it's hard not yeah. to get swept up in it and feel that passion a little bit when you're surrounded by it like that. Watching live games is also a big difference too. It is. Like uh yeah, like when you like I I definitely whenever I've gone to a live sports game, I've always had a good time cuz that's yeah. just fun. You're just, you know, and usually you got food as well, right? But you got, oh, yeah. you know, it, 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 Part of the it's the whole experience. Yeah. Uh I will say like the only sport I do get kind of like not not as uh swept up with as other people. I I am pretty like you know, uh, into his, uh, world cup. I do, okay. I do like it. I do root for, uh, Korea in the world cup, whenever the world cup rolls around, that uh -huh. is fun. Uh, and that's just cause, uh, back in 2002 was the, uh, was, uh, it was the year that, um, the world cup was held in Korea and Japan. And it was, mm. I think Korea got fourth or something. It was like the best they'd ever done. And like, 
uh, my brother had this VHS tape of like the highlights and he would just watch it over and over and I sort of watched <laughs> it too and, and even I got swept up in the hype uh, and just the whole idea of countries against countries that's just that's great I mean yeah. it's a whole a yeah. whole country's pride on the line that's right you know, it's, a, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a lot of fun um, now one, one thing you mentioned uh, is you uh, moved to LA when you were in college uh, what, yeah. what was that was that what was that uh, pursuing what uh, I I wanted to be an actor. That's all all I ever mm. wanted to do was be an actor. And, and I actually I when I was a when I was looking at schools, uh, I looked I basically looked between L.A. and New York City. Uh, sure. And I I was never a fan of New York City. I was never like mm. going to visit for a couple of days. Fine, but. Anything longer than like a two day visit has always been like uh, I don't I don't know it's too crowded there's it feels sure. dirty I don't and like not that L A is a lot better but it, I don't know <laughs> it's a very uh, different feel though it's very yeah, different it is yeah yeah um so when I was looking at schools it it uh, I I didn't have very many that I that that really excited me based on like what they had to offer and and where they were located. And when I went to the mm. campus at USC to visit, I was like, this is it. This is where I want to go. I don't want to go anywhere else. And uh, mm. like an idiot, that was the only school I applied to. And I didn't get accepted <laughs> as a freshman. Mm. So uh, okay. called up the the dean of admissions and was like, hey, wh what do I have to do to get in here next year? And, uh, and they were like, well, here are three schools that uh, have high transfer rates for us so i would recommend going to one of those and getting straight a's so that's what i did mm. <laughs> mm, okay and uh was this uh theater or, or what kind of what sort of acting were you aiming to uh, I, so yeah uh, go for i studied theater uh but i mm -hmm. part of what drew me to usc and this is this is something that i i didn't that didn't end up panning out really uh part of what drew me to USC was how good their film school was. Cause I thought, sure. you know, Hey, if I'm there as an actor, then the film school students are going to use actors in their movies. And you can build those connections for when they go on and become the next George Lucas or whatever. Uh, sure, but sure. it turns out that that's the, the film school is so prestigious that they just hire professional actors for all of their, their short <laughs> films and don't pay any attention mm. to the, to the theater students. Uh, but I, yeah, gotcha. I wanted to, I wanted to, I, I, I wanted to be on camera, uh, on TV and, and in, in the movies. Uh, mm, and, gotcha. and it didn't, uh, it, it didn't, I don't know. It didn't stick. I, I, mm. I went so, and, and most of my acting experience was theatrical, um, sure. being, being on stage, uh, which is a very different type of acting than than being on camera but but uh mm -hmm. i found as i was as i was going to school and and getting into more and more professional venues in terms of in terms of my acting stuff i was finding that the the people got less and less fun to work with like sure the the experience of acting was always a joy once i was actually doing it but the business of right. it started to bog it down and, and I, I lost my passion for it for a while mm. and then uh, I assume how did you well I guess voiceover you know yeah happened how did that sort of how did you because you know this is a very you know a lot a very common story you know a lot of people you know uh, have the intentions of on, uh, on camera and then they find voiceover and find that they they love it I assume yeah. the same thing happened to you so what what was that sort of how did that sort of happen for you uh, while I was going to school, I got big, I, I became a big fan of World of Warcraft and, mm. uh, I got involved with a podcasting network called WoW Radio, uh, mm. where they, they hosted like talk shows and stuff about the game. Um, and, uh, this was, you know, at the height of, of WoW fandom. Sure. Um, but I, I got into it through a radio play that I, I co-wrote and co-directed and played like 12 different characters in. Um, mm -hmm. And so when I, after like, after graduating from, from college with a degree in theater that, and 
at the at the bottoming out of our the, in the Great Recession, <laughs> like really bad timing to be coming into the workforce. Uh, mm. I spent like a year just floundering around, calling myself an actor and not really trying that hard to to pursue it. Uh, sure. And and finally, something just made me go. You know what? That that radio play was a whole lot of fun. I uh, maybe I should take a class in voiceover because at the time when I went to USC, mm. they didn't have anything pertaining to to VO there. Now, of course, the year after I graduated, they opened up a whole new building that had a VO studio and classes about that. But <laughs> sure, <laughs> sure. but uh, so I I went and took a I took a class in in voiceover and and immediately fell in love and I was like this is it this is what I want to do and I'm not gonna worry about the rest of acting I'm just gonna do voice acting. Yeah. So did you ever get into like the live action auditioning like auditioning callbacks all that? Yeah, a little bit. Not not much. It's such a different mm. world than than what we experience doing VO because like. Especially now, where where everybody auditions from home for almost everything, yeah. even before the pandemic. Mm -hmm. it, but like you know, I I get audition emails. It, it rarely a day goes by that I don't get an audition for something in my inbox that I'm gonna mm -hmm. record later that day or or later that week or whatever. But on camera, it's like you go, you know, if you're getting one audition a month, that's a lot. It feels like. Yeah, uh, and I'll just be, I'll just be straight up, you know, it fucking sucks, dog. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, like, it sucks. Like, uh, I don't do a whole lot of uh, uh, live action auditioning anymore, uh, but when, when my agents did send me out, it's just, you gotta go to a fucking place, and right? they all, and uh, you all look this, it's just, yeah, and there's and like, nobody's <laughs> happy, there's like, they all look, they all, every other people the there that look just like you, yeah, except prettier. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just, uh, it's not fun like i because you know i have friends and you know who are you know in film and television and i'm like i am a good for you like seriously i don't know how you do it i would go fucking crazy uh for me uh uh it just is such a grind yeah. and voiceover i don't know for me voiceover i for me it was always that was always what i wanted it was voiceover uh-huh to me, it's so much more freeing and so much it more. It is, and yeah, and, uh, and, yeah. Then, then what you're limited to by physical appearances, right? And stuff like that. Yeah, it was. Yeah. It was always something that I felt like I, I wanted. You know, I. It was something that I was like, yeah, I want to do that too. You know, but uh, but it was like I, I. It never really. It, you know, like like so many people, it never occurred to me that it was something that could be all that you do, as mm -hmm. as an actor. Sure. Do you remember your first job uh, that you booked? Uh, it was something I booked on, I think it was on Voice 123. Okay. And only vaguely. I, I think it was it, it was some stupid cartoony character voice thing for some, probably some website or other. And I, okay, no, let, I, let me rephrase it. What was the first job that you were, that you were like, oh, like, whoa, okay. This oh. is what this is this is what I like. Was is there a job like that? Your first sort of like there, thing where you're like, Oh, I'm, this is something where I'm I'm proud of it and it's a cool thing and this is cool. Yeah, I mean there's there's a few milestones like that because there there are some that like I look back on now and I'm like, Why was I proud of that? <laughs> but uh but at the time it seemed like <laughs> a a great gig. Uh like Absolutely. Yeah. The, it's just the, growing. Yeah. yeah. Like the first audio book I, I got because uh, I did audiobooks for a while in the early stages of my career, and the very first one I got was mm -hmm. one of my first paid gigs, and I was so excited because yeah. I was like, yes, I'm actually going to be making money for a change. And of course, yeah. looking back on it now, I was making pennies compared <laughs> to what I should have been making for the amount of work I was putting in. Um, yeah, but there's still a thrill, right? It's like you, yeah. it's like you finally got paid to do the thing yeah, you've yeah. been wanting to do. Yeah. Then I, I guess... What, what would be like the big, I guess your first in your eyes, like milestone of like, you know, this was like kind of the first thing. Oh, I think I would say it was, it was, uh, Aoba in Durarara, except mm, okay. I didn't really realize how much of a, a breakthrough role it was for me until, until I had been on the project for a little bit. Like my first session, mm. I was like, "This is cool." I'm doing because I wasn't a big anime fan 
Um, mm, okay. And so I was like, this is cool. I get to do cartoons. Great. But I didn't, mm. I didn't, it didn't register with me. Like, cause I didn't, I, I didn't look up the cast list or anything like that until we're, I, it, it was after my first session, at least when I was like, oh, oh, Steve Bloom is in this and Yuri mm. Lowenthal and Kari Walgren. Like there's, there's big name people in this, in this show. Yeah. And, yeah. uh, and then, uh, and then I think the one I remember, uh, I remember a moment pretty, pretty significantly shortly after I had booked, uh, the role of Mikazuki in Mobile Suit Gundam Iron Blooded Orphans, um, mm-hmm. which that one was a big milestone for sure. Uh, cause mm-hmm. I was, when I was, when I was a kid, I like, I, I'm not a huge anime fan, but when I was a kid, I watched Toonami as an after school block sure. and Gundam wing was my jam. Like I went to, I went to mm-hmm. school, I went to seventh grade. I went to school dressed as Katra for no reason. Hell yeah. Uh, Hell yeah. <laughs> uh, so that one, that one was big, but, uh, I, there's a moment that, uh, that really sticks out in my mind. Um, I'd been working on Your Lie in April. I had started, I, I think it had just started uh, Gundam. Mm. And we had a, a, a cast watch party of the first 11 episodes of Your Lie in April. Uh, mm. Which was not the plan when we started the evening. Like it, yeah, I was like, that's a lot of episodes. No, we, started, <laughs> we started at like at like seven or eight o'clock at night that night. And I think it was like a Thursday or something like, so, but the plan was just to watch like maybe two, maybe four episodes if we're feeling really into it. But sure. uh, But the, you know, the show was so powerful that we all just, we all just stuck around and kept watching uh, in the, in the theater there at, at bang zoom. And, Mm -hmm. and I just, I, I was like, I was watching this show that, Again, I didn't really know its significance just from seeing mm. my parts in it. Like I was like, "Oh, there's some poignant moments in this. That's cool." And then sitting there and watching it all together and seeing all the other performances that were so good and uh yeah. and just like being blown away by how moving it was and I was like, "I get to be a part of this." And mm. uh and then uh, and on top of that, I was we were going into escrow on this house that that we now own and i was planning to propose to caitlin uh like the next week or something like that it it wasn't sure. wasn't far away and i had just booked my first lead role in a show as as mikazuki so it was just like the the emotions just washed over me that night in the car on the way home and i just started bawling my eyes out that was a big mm. moment for sure yeah, yeah. I mean, even just getting to watch yourself in a finished product can be very yeah. just, you know, a big moment for you because, you know, as you're doing it, you're you're having fun, right? You're having fun and, you know, you know, with the director and, you know, it's like it's you know, like, oh, it's going good. It's going good. And you're but, you know, if it's going well, you're not you're really thinking too hard, right? About like, sure. you know, like every single moment. But then like as you sit down and First off, get to see what it looks like. That can also just be crazy. Yeah. Thing, especially if you're never given any visual on the character. Oh, like, yeah, oh, that's yeah. That's what all of this looks like. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and, and you know, you, you, you yourself have done, you know, cartoons, and it's like, you know, you see it, like, two years later or whatever. Oh, right? yeah. And it finally right. comes out. And you're like, oh, yeah. Like, I it that I'm finally getting to see what this was all supposed to look like that can be a very um uh, just i don't know just awe inspiring in a, in a sense sort of moment <laughs> when you get to see like and you, you feel very humble and like wow i get to be a part of something that's way bigger than than i am and it's absolutely fucking cool yeah now um i guess something i like to ask uh other actors is um what do you consider like to be quote uh, quote unquote like a your the best kind of session like uh, mm. the, the sort of session where you walk out of it going i fucking love that this is why i you know that's this a, is why i do this job that's a great question and it's and it's something that i think is worth asking yourself on the on a regular basis when you start doing this for a living because 
it all starts mm-hmm. to become a little bit more like you know when it when you're first starting out like every gig is exciting and then as as yes. it as it as it wears on and you continue to do it you're like okay well this is this is fine this is what i do for a living and it's it becomes a little bit more mundane uh sure. but but every now and then you get one of those sessions that just really you know spurs the creative juices and and makes you feel like oh i i got to do something that that felt meaningful today and that was cool yeah. mm. and i there it's it, you know there there's a, there's a couple different versions of that like there's there's a cartoon that i get to work on every now and then ve- very very sporadically where i'm just this ridiculous zany villain character that's that's just over the top and and mm. goofy and it's it's so much fun to be able to go crazy with it and go wild and and throw my voice out with all of the screaming and cat sure. maniacal cackling that I get to do. Um, is the cartoon out yet or or is it still working on it? That is a long story that I would happily talk to you about when we're not recording. Sure. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> do you want me to cut that out, my asking that? Uh, no, that's fine. I can cut that out. No, that's okay, fine. Cool. It doesn't matter. All right. Yeah, um, sure, sure. Uh, but there's, but there was another. I I worked on a, a game the other day. Actually, that one got announced. Uh, uh, oh, but I can't remember the title of it right now. So maybe I should just uh, speak in vagaries. Um, sure, there was a, sure. There was a game I got to work on uh, not that long ago, and I didn't know a whole lot about it going into it. So I was just like, you know, it was it was it was another gig as far as I knew walking into it. Um, yeah. But but the character had an arc and and uh uh really emotional stuff to go through and and um and and the performance style that that the director was was steering me towards was a very uh very natural very real very like, almost like filmic style delivery mm. and so completely opposite spectrum from the from the way over the top villainous character this very real sounding gritty person human that is going through very human issues and and coming to terms with with loss and and acceptance of that and all of that and it's just like sure. that that kind of stuff really gets me going too like just i don't know i like i like to be part of good stories more than anything mm. i like to i like to have a, a, a part in good storytelling that's that's what really excites me and a director Something where you can cares. tell, even from the, you're sure, oh yes, that is a huge factor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, even just like you, when you have the dialogue, you can tell that it's good. Right? Yeah. You, um, yeah. That's always, that's always a, a treat. And something you kind of brought up is it's sometimes it's fun where uh, for, you, you know, maybe one reason or another, maybe not entirely fair, you're like not excited about a thing. <laughs> like this has happened to me where I'm not super excited about like, I'm all, what yeah. is this? And then I go in and I'm like, oh, fuck, like this was fun. Or, yeah, oh, shit. yeah. Like this, like this was way more like uh, interesting or fun than I was yeah. anticipating. Like that's when it can be also a very fun surprise as well. Yeah. I, I remember saying at the end of that session, I was like, you know, I I did not expect to be doing quite so much acting today. But uh, but thank you. <laughs> thank you. That was that was a blast. I really enjoyed it. <laughs> nice, nice. Um, I I guess as we're uh sort of uh wrapping up here, um, I guess is there um, and anything outside of acting, it doesn't even have to be a career, just like stuff that you are hoping to accomplish or stuff that you're just looking forward to. Like yeah, let, let's say, let's say career career aside. Uh, okay. What is stuff in your life that you are either uh like hoping to accomplish or stuff that you're looking forward to i i am i am really overly passionate about the board and barrel um the Mm -hmm. the the show that you that you so generously appeared on uh, a few months ago uh we are just we are in the process of building out uh my my friend eric's garage with an Mm in-person set because that's what we were doing back when we started the show pre-pandemic And now we're all vaccinated, so we're like, hey, we want to get back to doing in-person stuff. And I, I think we're gonna be ready for Sunday night's show, uh, to do it to do it in person again. 
Um, so I'm really mm. excited about that because we've 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 come up with some, like we've streamlined some ideas for for how to make the show visually interesting and and stuff and uh, like I really I'm I'm really jazzed about what we're doing there. We we get like yeah. you know we get barely any viewers for it because there's not a big crossover between people who are interested in my career and people who are interested in watching four white <laughs> men in their thirties <laughs> play board games, but uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's a lot of fun so. We do it for us, and and that's, I I'm and I'm really proud of what we're what we're pulling off with it. I I don't know. I I like it a lot. No, that's I love hearing that because you know I think a lot of people get wrapped up in, oh I gotta I gotta either chase what's popular, right? Yeah, yeah. Like I gotta do I gotta I gotta play. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't do specific examples. Well, sure, yeah. but <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, but... yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, but you know it's like I should I should you know. Because for me, you know, any anything I do online, it's I've always stubbornly stuck to. I like doing what I like to do, and if you like to watch it, great. If you don't, I don't care. Right. But if you do, hey, we're gonna have a good time. And yeah. that to me is the stuff I'm most interested in. You know, I, I like seeing when people are genuinely passionate about like stuff and uh, like. You know, I I might even have some questions for you about you know board games streaming after this because like yeah you know that's something that I've always thought would be fun you know not not even not as like a sure uh, a career or anything but just right. even just a logistics like you know I, I I I love board games it's it's easily one of my if not the biggest hobby I have in my yeah, spare yeah. time and and we've done a lot of like um, you know board game arena and stuff like that but. I, right. There is definitely the the magic of um, uh, doing it in person and having that you know that you can't really beat it like when because uh, you know recently I've been doing game nights again uh, with everyone vaccinated of course and cleared yeah 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 but you know friends have been like wow and you know board game arena is good but it's there's some there's yeah there's some compares. like yeah and and I I use tabletop simulator and I I love that it gives you the option to play just about any board game that exists uh but it's there's something about those that being able to touch and feel the pieces and roll those dice and like that 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 just makes it so much more i don't know so much more yeah something <laughs> yeah there's a there's the component value of like getting to see like you know seeing all the the beautiful board and all the pieces and moving things around but also just laughing in your friend's face yeah just laughing directly yeah. in their face right because like, it's... are you familiar with uh liar's dice or peruto i am not oh okay it's a very very fun simple bluffing game it, uh, it it's like you know centuries old it's uh it's what they played in pirates of the caribbean three oh okay if you've seen that yeah uh, but it's a very simple bluffing game of just like can you guess how many of this dice face are under all the cups and you either have to bid higher or you have to call bluff. Okay. And it's great. It's great online. We like during pandemic. I that's like the game we played the most because it's so fun. Right. But playing it in person, shaking those cups of dice, slamming yeah, them yeah. down, just like counting the dice, laughing in people's faces. Yeah. Nothing compares to that. It it is a it's a fucking rush. So yeah, well yeah, and board games like they they are designed to be played in a group of people that are all in the same space and there's like I mean, being able to to see and hear people over Zoom or Discord or whatever you're using is is it's nice. It's a nice sub it's mm -hmm. a it's a nice, you know, second best thing, but it is definitely second best to being in yeah. the room with your friends and and hanging out and having a good time. So I think that's absolutely a factor. Yeah. Well, uh hey, we should uh we should uh, play some games in person sometime uh as well. Agreed. Uh, uh and uh why don't you go ahead and uh, where can people uh find you? Sure. Uh I am Kyle McCarley on Twitter and Kyle McCarley on Twitch. Those are the two best places to find my stuff. And is that where also we, we can find Board and Barrel? 